you know, I asked that with Marcus J. Thank you, everybody that stayed with us in social media. We see y'all out there. We got people listening to us in Charlotte and Jersey City and in Maryland, all over the East Coast. And, of course, Chicago out there. We see you, True Fighter. We appreciate you uh, listening to us and uh, sharing and liking our stuff and helping us to grow and build legacy internet radios because of you folks out there listening to us that helps us continue to do what we do Eight zero four four zero two two eight nine three is the number to call us if you want to uh verbally be part of the show otherwise continue to hit us up in social media we see y'all out there y'all been awfully quiet tonight so big rube and i and the crew have been having to anchor the show without y'all which is cool because i like to talk and i would do this show in my own house with a shirt off in my own mirror if i could <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I'll be doing yeah, Mama J's hair in the, in, the, in the mirror with no shirt on doing the show if I could. But uh, but seriously, I, we we appreciate it. And you know, if y'all choose not to hit us up, cool. But we know you're out there because we can see you, so we appreciate it. Big Rob, it's time for you to lead us in the round table. And uh, keep in mind, everybody, we do have a, another announcement that we're going to be breaking later on in the show. Uh, so when it comes time to do that, we will do that. But we do have a second big announcement on the future of Ain't No Has Step on Marcus J as well as Legacy in that radio that will be coming before the end of the show. Big Rube, what you got? It's Big Rube's Roundtable. Well, we talk about a couple things, and I want to hear some opinions. So we're going to start with something real easy. And then we're going to get down to something real hard. Well, the first thing, yeah, pun. Uh, so, the first thing we're going to talk about, going back to football, last night, Navarro Bowman tore his ACL. For some people, your ACL is your knee, you jack your knee up. And as he got carted off, people threw food at him. They threw popcorn at him. Now, they won't throw a popcorn at him to celebrate him leaving. They probably threw popcorn at him because they didn't really like him. This is not the first time that people have thrown stuff in stadiums. Such as back in the day, you want to used to be really hardcore. Duke University used to be the best. They would take your weakness and then they would throw some on it. Such as one year, Dennis Scott, he who used to play in the NBA back then, he played for Georgia Tech. The year before that, he was a little hefty. He was about 285 pounds. He was kind of fat. You know, this year he came back, he slimmed down to about 230, you know, small forward. So what they do, they threw a whole bunch of Twinkies in front of him when his name got announced. You know, they've done numerous things. And, you know, of course, everybody knows Philadelphia Eagles. They like to fight. So they got a jail underneath their stadium just because it gets a little unruly in Philly. So my question to y'all. Have y'all ever seen anything done to anybody that was just so messed up that it was a little disrespectful? And it doesn't have to be with sports. It can be with anything. I'll let y'all ponder on that for a second. You know? Ponder. Ponder. Okay. Not Christian ponder, not Samantha ponder, but ponder as in thinking. Okay. Such as one time, you know, I wasn't there, but I saw it on TV. You know, at weddings, people come out and they throw rice and stuff and yada, yada, yada. Well, I guess some kid, some kid, some woman, she was hating. So she threw sugar in the bride's face. <laughs> <laughs> it's real messed up. But I guess in a past life, she did something wrong to this woman. So she made her pay on her day. She threw sugar in the lady's face. Sugar in the face, man. And I mean, it's, it's different when you're throwing rice. Oh, throwing rice, throwing above it. You throw sugar in somebody's face, it gets in your eyes and stuff. You know, there yeah. goes the paint job. Yeah. <laughs> the paint so, job. You full of good ones today. Hey, you? man, I got, hey, it is, my one line of machine is on today. So, has anybody seen anybody done something so wrong to somebody? I guess the only thing that I can speak to, um, I mean, I don't know if you're referring to in person or whatever, but one thing that has become a big deal with me that I'm noticing a lot of lately is just the mean and callous and cruel and crass things that people are saying to people that, that don't even know in social media. It's like, really? 
if you was here, would you say that to my Gangsters. face? I mean, yeah, it's the whole text message gangster thing. I know we talked a little bit about this last week, you know, particularly non-famous people talking about famous people. Like, you know, you really want to tell this girl that she's wrong because she's black and married a white dude? It was alluding to the story that we did yeah. last week. Um, and, 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 you know, some of the other things that are, that, that are coming up, you know. And so right now for me, the biggest deal is... You know, the punk ass text message gangsters that's saying all of this punk passive aggressive stuff in social media. If you got a problem with me calling you out, you know where to find me. I'm here every week at 804-402-2893. You can call me up and tell me that you got a problem with me calling you a punk because you called a stranger a punk. That's just me. Sorry. Dre, what you got? You grabbed the mic, so you must ready to talk. Well, the only incident I can remember personally from watching television was, of course, your beloved Duke University. Um, watching the basketball game, this guy was at the free throw line, and they did a whole expose on this on ESPN Sports Center where the guy shooting a free throw, his grandmother had died a few hours before, and it had spread through social media. And basically, the Duke fans let his, just lit him up at the free throw line. And basically, that came off as one of the most disrespect, disrespectful things I have ever seen when you talk about a person's grand, dead grandmother. A few hours before, literally a few hours before, and he still decided to play the game. And it was just one of the most horrific things I've ever seen. Yeah, that's kind of messed up. Wow. Yeah. I hope some people got kicked out, like, forever. Yeah. Like, as long as you go to Duke University, you would never come in this game. Yeah. But, you know, people as a whole is kind of disrespectful nowadays. Like, like uh, old boy from uh, the Texans, uh, uh, Matt Shaw. They just, yeah. they booed him out of the out of the stadium. He he just he one of the reasons that you know they that was, has, there. has been as good as they were the past couple of years. And you know he has an off thing. I mean, and they boo him. I mean, bad. And so you know, I think just people as a whole are, are, are really disrespectful these days. But and, and it's all because they're they're in the you can't touch me zone. Like I'm 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 online, so you can't touch me. I'm in the stadium, and it's a bunch of fans doing it, so you can't touch me. You know, and it's it's all about you can't reach out and touch that specific person, but no, nah, they wouldn't do it. Well, I mean, Ron Artest proved that that wasn't true <laughs> years ago when um they got into a little fight and uh, I guess some fan threw a beer on him as he was laying on a scores table and then he went up and punched some dude, which I'm going to be real. I really wasn't mad that Artest punched the guy. Ooh. He just punched the wrong guy. <laughs> I, I felt bad for the, for the guy he punched. <laughs> But, you know, you just can't be coming out there and just doing whatever. And then I think the, the punch of that night was Jermaine O'Neal. I mean, some fan was running at him, and he just he, – he ran and, like, clocked him. It was the, the greatest thing ever. Yeah, but, no, nah, it was pretty stupid. But I, I don't condemn fighting for any reason. But it was, that was interesting, the, the brawl at the palace or whatever it was. Um, when y'all get a chance, it's kind of funny, but it's real kind of messed up going back to – the gangster thing. Um, oh, what's his name? Uh, I had his name. Um, the dude on ABC Late Night. Come on. Jimmy Kimmel? Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel does this thing, these things called um, mean tweets. Basically what it does, stars will come in and they'll go through their Twitter and find mean things that real people have said about them. So, of course... One in particular. It's all on YouTube. It's like seven or eight of them. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's pretty funny. But one of them is about Jessica Simpson. And somebody tweeted, you know, something about, I'm glad, you, you know, you lost this baby. But how do you gain 598 pounds or something? Some craziness, you know, which is real messed up. And she just kind of looks as like, really? Somebody just wrote this about me? But in that, keep, you know. Just, just make sure you're not saying nothing stupid to people because that's just messed up. Um, the next thing we're going to talk about, I know everybody has one. You know, um, it, it's one of the things that we did when we were growing up on Sunday mornings. You know, after you went to church and you ate, or maybe sometime in between, you know, hey, I want to read the, the comic strips in the paper. So, you know, somebody get a comic strip, you sit there for about an hour and just go through and read all of them and, and laugh at stupid stuff because most of them are stupid. So, what is your favorite comic strip? And I know we're going to have to pass it around. Now I'm going to start because I know somebody will take mine. 
and I mean like Calvin and Hobbes was the ish. <laughs> Calvin and Hobbes <laughs> is <laughs> yo. I mean, you want to learn about life? You read Calvin and Hobbes. That is the greatest. I mean, everybody talk about peanuts. Man, I don't give a crap about Snoopy. Hey, hey, hey! I like peanuts. Hey, peanuts. be quiet. I don't give a crap about Snoopy. It was about Calvin and his tiger that was made up. But it was a little bit, yo. He used to come home from school and that joint used to tackle him every day. <laughs> they used to make up games. They used to, what, Spaceman Spiff? They, he, his imagination was so great that he would be in class not doing work. He would be imagining about being on a different planet. And then he could take a box and turn it, oh, a cardboard box and turn it into anything. I think one of the biggest things was a trash magnifier. When you would change you into something else, it was the greatest stuff ever. You can sit here and laugh at it, but if you read it, you laugh more. I got like four or five of those books. Yes. Those are the greatest. You know they have a box set out with all of them? No, yes, yeah, like $80. Yeah. I got to find somebody who will buy it for me because I can't see myself spending $80 yeah. on that. <laughs> but, you know, so uh, who's, that's why you got the mic. What's up? Well, who's your, what's your favorite comic strip? Blondie. With Dagwood Bumstead sub sandwiches. Wow, that's so boring. <laughs> what? That's not boring. Uh, first thing you came, that's the first thing you see. I mean, it ain't no color. I loved reading him. Really <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't first. I think. Um, it was probably like third Bertha, or something. I think Bertha was first, actually. Bertha? Yeah. The Viking lady? The Viking with the, with the Viking mm-hmm. helmet? No. Bertha was this that. really big lady. That was Hagar. Bertha, I don't. Well, Bertha, Bertha was this really big lady. She was always sitting mic, down, mic, mic. and her things were like hanging here, and she just had like <laughs> thoughts in her head. Bertha had big breasts, and she had thoughts in her head. Cause you can say that it's okay. Mm. Talk to the mic. Dagwood Bumstead. I like Dagwood. Uh, okay. Jr. You got the mic. Peanuts, man. Peanuts. I love peanuts. I just I, I I I went into the library one day and just randomly saw that they had a book on peanuts. And I was like, oh, they actually got library books like this. And I went through all of them. I, Did, I made was that like your college or school or something? Elementary school, yeah. Oh, Elementary was, and middle school. I was about yeah. to say, man, that, that's, <laughs> that shows the... And, uh, you know, I, I mean, I like Calvin and Hobbes, too. Like, they, like, I remember one particular Calvin and Hobbes where, like, he had a little stand set up. And he was selling kicks in the butt for a dollar. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and he could not understand why nobody bought one because he felt like everybody he knew needed one. Yeah. I love but Calvin and Hobbes was is really good. Peanuts, um more new. I like Boondocks before it became a TV show. There was no Uncle Ruckus in the Boond in the original comic strip until like the very last comic strip. Yeah. And they kinda introduced him. I think that was more for the T V show. But they had Caesar and and it Riley was kinda like an afterthought, but they had Caesar and they had Huey and they would sit on a couch and they would prank call celebrities and they had this thing where they like call up Usher and they'd be like, Yo Usher, did you know that Michael Jackson is an artist and not a genre of music? And they hung up the phone. And then they would go to like they would go to Justin Timberlake, and they would do they would do a bunch of like I I, I love the Boondocks like and they touched on social issues too yeah so I, I like them as well as something is, that's a little more current but I, I will say see you talk about Kevin and Hobbs and and the other thing reminded me of what Kevin and Hobbs would give the Dad of the Year award <laughs> and he he asked his dad for something and his dad be like nah yep this ain't helping you in the Dad of the Year award and he walk away <laughs> the greatest things ever uh, Banks. Family Circus. Thank you. Family Circus. I don't know, I don't know why y'all hating on Family Circus. You watching uh, just for the maps? No, no, because <laughs> they they always had that ghost saying, "Not me." Not that was that was that was my buddy right there. That was my favorite character. Not me. Mm-hmm. It won't uh, me. No matter what you did, not me. And you see, not me, just walking away too. Do you still use that in your personal life? Hey, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me. That's Dre. my theme song. What's up, Dre? What's your favorite comic strip, man? I'm partial to Garfield myself. But can you learn life lessons from Garfield? You learn to hate Mondays. You learn that any skinny guy can get a hot chick when he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> you, you learn. You learn that there's always gonna be food. You learn if you got an annoying cousin, you can just ship him off to Abu Dhabi. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, you look, I mean, you learn. You have a, always have a best friend there with Odie. I mean, it's just life lessons you learn from. Yo, Garfield. man, he kicked Odie's ass on the regular. Hey, man, you gotta kick your best friend's ass every now and then just so you can get, get that. 
Get that love. It's love, man. Yeah. yeah That's what we should get. Ah. Marcus J. Uh, Carlton Banks, please don't talk unless you have a mic in front of you. How long we been doing this? How long we been doing this? All in front of you. Really, really? Yeah. Come on, man. Um, I didn't grow up watch, reading. I, I was reading like the New York Daily News and the Wall Street Journal as a kid. So I, I didn't read them. I just didn't. They didn't have comics in the Huffington Post? I, yeah, they didn't have the Huffington Post. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I never enjoyed says fav, uh, Family Circus. Um, Calvin and Hobbes, never heard of it. Never heard of Family Circus before in my I'll life. I'll bring you a book, uh, sir. You can keep it. I'm oh, not interested. No, um, you need you Can need I finish my it. part? No. Please? Okay. Anyway, um, if I had to choose something in adulthood, I would go with the Peanuts, and I also would go with the Boondocks uh, because I've checked them out in adulthood, but I'm just not a comic strip guy. I'm not a comic book guy. I don't like to read stuff in a little bubble. You know, it's too slow. It's too small for me. So... Not really my thing, but, you know, I mean, like, I get the Garfield thing because I remember watching the cartoon. So I'm like, word, that is true about it. And Peanuts, anybody that knows me knows that I am the living, grown-up version of Charlie Brown, you know, so. You said Mr. Football? Mr. Football? Somebody always moved football. I mean, I, I, you know, I was the kid that got a bag of rocks. Yeah, that was me, you know. <laughs> you know, try to kiss a girl and, you know, she'd be mad at you or you, she'd say dog germs like Snoopy. So, yeah. That was that was me, but no, I didn't read comic strips when I was a kid coming up. I know I'm a downer. Okay, I don't, I don't care though. I, I really don't care that y'all think start, I'm a downer. I need to start going to you first then. My Maybe mom you should. Needs to line us up. Like All right. something happened. I don't mind being a downer. Now for the last one of the night. <laughs> Hold on, wait a minute. You just cut the sister off, man. She just. Oh, said, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were saying something. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, that's why you need to speak into the I mic. Was, I was speaking into the mic. Well, you it's not like don't. you can hear her any different I mean, if she was speaking into the mic. Man, she I, can. Mean, I thought she was talking about to somebody else, man. I don't. I moved on. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> the the family um, speak to the mic. circus. My mom would something. Somebody would do something wrong, and we'd be like, "Not me, not me." She'd be like, "Okay, you, 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 you all line up. Everybody gets not smack, hit, whatever." She's like, "Not me. He's gonna get that." Ass whip tonight, and we would get it. Get it. Wow. Cool. Whatever. We got, I mean, uh, abuse of That's right, I interrupted you. On the for. Marcus J show. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was abused as a young child. I said it was not me. My mom whooped my ass. He's like, come here, not me. <laughs> oh, my God. Jeez. Y'all are, y'all are. Yep. Uh, uh, said, said is uh, checking in. What up, Brian? Said, What's said, uh, Hocus Pocus. Okay. Did anybody know what Question that is? Question mark. Uh yeah, said just you, you getting the blank said. stare like I you got the blank said. stare. You said hocus pocus and they don't know what it is, and I said I don't read comics and they you and I we just killed the whole five. Picture the, show. the bubble yeah. over our Thanks, heads said. with question marks yeah. in them. Said that's how I said because said don't care no more than I do. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for not caring. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah. All right now. I, everybody you can go now. You, talk? you can right. go now. Are you good? All right, just making sure I don't want to hurt anybody's Ow. feelings. Ow. Now, but hold on, one more thing. Oh, my bad. Yeah. <laughs> I was like that. <laughs> so, like, normally, you know, I've gone on record as saying that, yes, when I get married, regardless of how much she has or how much I have, we're going to get a prenup. More so to protect whomever, but so the relationship could be purely about love. Now, as I was reading the other day, I'm like, okay, prenup, check. Oh, wait a minute. I got to start getting a wife first. We'll, we'll come back to that later. But now, is it necessary for me to get insurance on my wedding? Yeah. Yes, it is. I mean, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so basically. To get insurance, insurance on a wedding. In case you have to when they run out or something like that. So, so basically, you know, if somebody decides they want to roll out at the last minute, you can get insurance for that. So. You know, so Brandy, if, if you decide you want to get married, and you're not sure if you, he gives you a nice big ring, and he's not sure whether, you're not sure whether this dude is real, you can get an insurance policy just in case you want to roll out so you don't lose any money. Well, see, my thing is I'm not really one of those girly girls that wants a big thousands of dollar wedding. I could just go before the justice of the peace and get it taken care of, and that's it. Now, if we do decide to have some with a big reception, oh, we partying, but I'm not paying for it. She ain't paying for it. I'm wow. not going to be paying, ain't for paying for it. it. So, does anybody have any idea how much your average wedding costs these days? About 10000 
Anybody else? If it's ten thousand, you're in the wrong decade, brother. <laughs> you got a nice girl if it's ten thousand. More than that, like that's just the average. You said the average, like that's not anywhere near the average. I mean, they, I know you can, but they, I mean, yeah, the average the person mic. ain't. Yeah, got, your, your flowers are ten thousand dollars at least. Man, you better go with some flowers for about yeah. three hundred. All right, let's let's just yeah. be honest about this. We all know that the the lady in the room said the flowers are ten thousand dollars. Ain't no way in this ground yeah. earth that I'm gonna pay ten thousand dollars for some damn flowers. Never. Exactly. We keeping them forever. Yeah. You better go to the lady house next door. I'm just and clips on. I'm just. <clears throat> I'm just being real. Now, the average wedding costs around twenty six thousand dollars. Good lord. Exactly. First of all. I don't know these people. Can we just get a car That's and a live in common law? <laughs> <laughs> Eight years in Virginia. Twenty G's though. 26, 26 G's. G's. 26 G's. And that's not even a good. That's exactly. not even a good wedding. I can get a Camry for that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for the hey, price look, of a new car, you get a wife for life or a Camry wedding. for ten years. I'll, hey, look, it depends on the wife. <laughs> it really does. I mean, you, you better be and, careful. You know, now. I'm saying normally, I'm saying, now. ain't nobody scared of you. And normally, the the the. The wedding is paid for by the by the bride's parents. So if you have a daughter, you better start ponying it up. So and Marcus, you better start you better start saving some money, bro. I ain't spend no I'm twenty six thousand on a so, wedding. He gonna give so, me a couple of so goats for or ten thousand dollars. You telling me I can't go like? You can go to the JOP for ten thousand. Oh come on, like whoa, whoa! First of all, if you go to a JOP for ten thousand, you cost well, you cost having, way too much. You're having your I'm gonna assume your reception. You gotta pay for your DJ. You gotta pay for your food. You gotta pay for um, your flowers, your decorations, your tables, your chairs. Are you telling me ten thousand not covering that? No. It depends where you go. Photographer starts at about a thousand to eleven hundred. So I'm I'm gonna let you know right there. It depends where you go. Pin me in for eleven hundred. It, it depends. It depends where you go. If you go to a church, you don't necessarily may have to pay the church, but you have to give them yeah, a donation of some sort. Of some sort. If it's your church, you gotta give them a donation. Right. I mean, okay. somewhere anywhere from five to a hundred, five thousand to five hundred to a thousand mm-hmm. dollars. Okay. All right. Now, if you go to a reception, unless you go into, you know, somewhere extremely inexpensive, you know, like if you go into the 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 community center, yeah. <laughs> you know, then that might be like two thousand. Leave or bring the chairs. Now, <laughs> the the food. It, let's be real, man. The hey, food, I'm good with some wing dings and meatballs, man. Yo. Your wedding. I hope your. I hope your wife. Do wants. I got to spend? A, do I get a diary too? I mean, <laughs> I mean, but no. But the, but these days, weddings cost like stupid amounts of money. Like I, I, I'm, I'm really not understanding why. Like I, I understand. Like now, I can understand like paying for a dress. I do understand that. I understand how. Oh, that's a that's a at, look. That's at least. And, I mean, real. I mean, real talk. We not talking about Kleinfels to say yes a dress. Man, you ain't need no six thousand dollar dress, man. Now, you if you want like a twelve hundred dollar dress, come on now. Question. Like, we, can, we can do that. Question. Question. You have a young lady, correct? Yeah. And, I, I got to watch four weddings all the time. Exactly. Man, say, if you say, think she's not rolling out to try to get some sense, look, look, that she gonna wear one time, you fooling yourself? Nah, nah. But no, but but she, but even even when we're sitting there, she's like, man, like five thousand dollars for that? Like, nah, we can go to like. The some, like something cheaper than that, like a like twelve hundred, fifteen hundred. Like I even I suggested I was thinking like, okay, so maybe you would be looking at like two thousand. She looked at me like I was crazy or for suggesting like oh, you got two thousand for a wedding you dress. Got so I mean, I, I, now I understand if you if you going for something like a big church or like a well known church and you and so you you gonna fill it with like maybe uh, two hundred guests and you gonna have this big cake and but like can we be for real? Can we just like how much Scale is that the, down a little bit. I mean, this ain't Sex in the City. I ain't, I ain't big. I ain't carry like this ain't. Who plans your wedding, man? Huh? Who you think's gonna plan your wedding? I don't know, man. How much you paying for the ring? Huh? How much you paying for the ring? Honestly, the one I looked at was thirty-seven. So that's thirty-seven hundred out of what? That's not even included in the wedding. Right. Yeah, that's not included. Right. Might as well go ahead and put you at five, put you at five thousand because see, that's the ring and, and that's me, the photographer. All right, so that's five <laughs> grand right there. All right. So I wasn't. I'm not even. I'm not even including like the ring. Like if okay, you want to add the ring, I'm just, just, I'm, I'm just going to do the math for you. That's five grand right there. That's me and the ring. All right, go ahead. Next, That's me you and the, the ring. ring. <laughs> I don't know if I like the way that sounded. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess you can. I guess you can say like what a, a G for a good cake. Who making the cake? I don't know. 
you cross, yeah. you cross Mike the cake. Hey, you cross. Can no, you your cake, your cake, saying, your cake is actually gonna be one of the cheaper things. I'm not your saying like gonna a be cake cheap. boss cake or nothing like that. No, your cake, you know, your cake, people out your, there your cake could be cheap. Your cake could be about three to five hundred. Okay. Your, cake, your cake could be about three to five hundred. Seriously. Okay. Hey Banks, how much your wedding um, costs? If, if I'm taking huh? gas, hold on, hold on a second. Banks, how much your wedding costs? If I may ask. My wedding? I got lucky because I got damn deep. Y'all were at my wedding. I was not. You know how? Oh, you won't. You were. You know how much I paid per, per plate? Less than ten dollars a plate. And you saw how much food I had in my yeah, wedding. The food was good too. Yes, right. <laughs> Yo, I had chicken. Marcus I had corn chicken. I, I had roast place, beef, though. some potatoes, so, vegetables. Now, tea. Was it individual fun? plates or did you do buffet? We did buffet. Okay. Which is cheaper, most people. But it's cheaper. But in the world, in the world, apparently, it's tackier. I don't really care. But no, you gotta no, understand no. that was eleven damn years but ago. But you know, sometimes when so you do a did buffet, you spend over ten thousand a buffet? Yeah, food is actually we, we spent close to that much. Depending on like, yeah. all right, that's true. But our banks eleven years ago spent about ten thousand dollars on his wedding. Inflation. Yeah, you can go ahead and double triple that right now. Yeah. Real talk. Unless your family cooking. And you gotta pay for oh, the people. You. <laughs> I, I know. I know personally. I know personally. If you, Yvette, if, if, if you listen, if you ain't fell off yet, because you know the 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 pregnancy sleep. That you be under Like I know I know you already said I can't get no wing dings And meatballs I know this I know this But Like I mean Who was like No Hors d'oeuvres Like why you got hors d'oeuvres Y'all ain't eat before you got that When they first come in You're giving them drinks you know, before okay, everything like, starts, little champagne you know, water. dancing, little music. You got to pay for all of that. Right. Now, the, the yep, the the food is coming around for dinner. You got to pay for that. It's it's everything is separate. There's no one big package. Give me five thousand dollars, Brandy. What is you shaking your head at, at me like? It's expensive. I'm sorry. Yeah, speak to my mic. All right. <laughs> so, no, I'm in my head because there's no earthly way that any of this is gonna happen with me. I forget that oh. common law. So like, you're getting mad? I'm not, if it's gonna cost that much, new. No. Like, so you wouldn't even do ten. Remind me to make sure that I, I'm around when when it goes uh, down for you because I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna tell you right now. You, you can get a used wedding gifts, um, wedding dress. All right, get it used because you want to wear that sucker once. All right, get that used. Go ahead and pay me my eleven hundred. I'm going to keep that price out there for you. Um, your ring They say some crappy crap Like man I want to really say crap. I want to say Something worse But you know I don't have to go Into the tip jar But they say It's supposed to be like Three months salary For her ring See we I, not, I'd be That's like, a different discussion For a different time And you know I heard six uh, See that, Hey yo hey, If it's six I'm hitting her In the back of the head Like shit Like <laughs> <laughs> No she's gonna think It's six She gonna see six stars But right. she gonna think It's six It is three to six months Depending Mike's. on the Mike's Just please. turn around Just turn around Mike's <laughs> it is three to six months, depending on their salary. Okay. So, are you sending that? Are right. you sending that message out now? <laughs> oh, she got quiet. I'm just saying. No, I'm not sending any message. That three to six out. month garbage. I'm not sending. It's garbage. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard in my life. That is. I, I, that is thing. absolutely one of. I mean, I heard a lot of dumb stuff in my life, but. That's one of the dumbest things I ever heard in my life. If I'm a billionaire, I'm supposed to give you three months of my salary to buy a ring? Like, really? I mean, it's just dumb. Yeah, you know what I mean? So it's just dumb. You go out and you buy a nice ring that's worth that's 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 worth the person that you're courting, Fine. and that is within your you know your your financial you know abilities. And if that happens to be three months the salary, then so be it. If it ends up being less than that, then what does that mean? That make you less of than a person because the ring costs less than three months of salary? That's just the dumbest thing. Like I'm not getting it out to Cracker Jack box, and it took more than five quarters to get your ring. So you really ain't got to be tripping if. That's where you going with it. Six, yeah, oh, six quarters, yeah, whole dollar fifty. But My it's just. Is, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, man. You know, Brandy, you you always seem to bring a logical uh, viewpoint, and that's the reason why I'm so glad and pleased to have you here when you come. Because you know, while I would probably be one, and you know, when I got married, I know you're gonna ask me. I have no idea what it costs. I have no idea. I, I didn't care. You know, I just didn't. You know, there's certain things. I'm like, just deal with it deal with it and you know tell me where to be you know when i was asked for money and rubens asked me without a mic in his hand who paid for it when i was asked for money i wrote a check and i'll just i'll just leave it at that i didn't write all the checks but when i was asked for money i wrote a check and so i don't get caught up in it costs ten thousand dollars it costs twenty six thousand dollars man that's bullshit to me for real just get married and move on 
my point of view is this i i have my own house i have to buy a car eventually i have my own things yeah, to pay man. all of this type of money That's for crazy. one day for me to profess my love to you in front of all of these people who don't really care. Half of them there to see if you actually go through with it. I, I just, I can't. <laughs> other I half can't. there to eat. The other <laughs> half there to eat. There I just go. want my 1100 I mean, unless he's rich, then I don't see it happening. Yeah, I just, you know, I just, like, to, like to me, you know, I mean, the, the wedding is just, I mean, I, anybody that knows me knows that I am very, very cynical when it comes to that kind of stuff. And the wedding, it, it's really not about you as the dude. It's just not... You know, it's 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 about her, and and I get that it's about her. But if you're her, don't care. Word is born, we can rock and roll together. It's for real, like Brandy's like, yo, you know, where you want to go? You know, like one of one of my one of my best friends got married to Justice of the Peace, and we went down to the Justice of the Peace, and you know, I stood I stood there next to him as his best man and witness, and you know, a couple of other folks was there, and then after that, we went out to dinner and kept it moving. And they and that was years ago, and they still rocking and rolling. I got another good friend that I mentioned on the air every once in a while that met her husband on the way back from Iraq. The two of them was on their way back from Iraq and got married at the Justice of the Peace seven days later, and they still married. And so, you know, I mean, I remember hearing stories of these people with these big lavish weddings and getting left at the altar. Then what? I guess that ultimately, Ruben, you brought this whole thing up. You brought this up about having insurance. That's probably what you need insurance for. If you got somebody that's shady and flighty that might bounce on you, male or female, because there's precedent. Remember the runaway bride a few years ago? And then there's some brothers that get the ice on their feet, too. So, I mean. Yeah, well, no. well, how good is that insurance? Is that good for a whole year or well, just that well, day? Because, well, no, you it, know. It covers the wedding. Does it, so. co- does it cover punk assness? I mean, I'm, you, I'm about to get into that. <laughs> I mean, it covers it protects against it protects against losses against extreme weather. So if you decide you want to have it out and it rain on your ass, yeah, it covers that. Um, illness, somebody get sick and I can't physically make it to the altar. I'm gonna have to be on my deathbed for me not to make it to the altar because that's just stupid. I damn it was. And <laughs> 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 that's love. Oh. That's love, Miss Banks. That's love. He was all understand. Dead. I was drugged. I was high. Well, I was high on OTCs, man. I took about twenty pills that day. Seriously. Woo. Whatever it takes to get through it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you'd have said you were drunk, I probably would have gave you that too. I was. And, <laughs> and I, I wasn't drinking crown yet. I was drinking tequila. Remember the before oh, before with te- tequila. And, uh, That's not even real tequila. It, 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 well, yeah, I was drinking tequila and uh, and Hennessy that day. Because wow. back when I was drinking starter liquor. That's what Hennessy is, y'all, starter liquor. Yeah. So, and even one firm, one insurance firm does cover a change of heart. So, yeah. if you get left at the altar, you ain't got you to you pay for none of your insurance to do it. Which is really messed up because I feel like that's almost a cop out. But how much is the insurance? Well, I'm about to get into that. <laughs> this one place who does insurance, this woman spent $500 to cover a $50,000 destination wedding. You know? And apparently what happened was they went out of the, they they went to New Orleans and they were worried about hurricanes. Okay. Then don't get married in October in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Stupidity. But the weather was cool, but the limousine didn't show up. So they had to take a taxi to church. And they used their insurance policy to claim deposit money they didn't get back from the limo driver. Which means he probably wasn't on the up and up. So, I mean, it, it's, it's interesting. And a lot, a lot of insurance cover it. But I saw and I was like, wow, you can get insurance on your wedding. And you can get insurance just in case that SOB don't show up. So women, and even some dudes out there, if you got any questions about you know, I'm not sure I want to go through with this. Then don't do it. <laughs> As Brandy says, don't do it. I say, look, man, get some insurance. Because weddings ain't cheap. So at just all. in case. Hey, man. <laughs> look, man, it's one thing to be just in case and you roll out and you got bills for something you even go to. Because you best believe if a dude roll out on his lady, she is going to run the bill up as far as possible. And then throw it on that dude. Guaranteed. That's why you get insurance. I mean, exactly. It's going to be a party. And they're going to go through all the food and all the liquor. Uh, what? Cash bar? We're going to open, put it on the tab. And next thing you know, you're going to get a bill at your house. Yo, here you go. That's why you get insurance. 
that is why you get insurance. Me, I mean, I hope I wouldn't need it, but you know, you never know these days. I mean, when I when I cross when I pass gets there, I'll I'll make some decisions. I mean, she already got to deal with a a, a um what's you call a prenup, so she might not be ready to deal with that insurance. She might. Well, you think it will leave me on the altar? Well, you know, <laughs> one day you might act a fool, and I might have to do that. Hey, it protects it protects me. That means you can't sue me. I'm all about not getting sued. I mean, let's just be real. It's all about not getting sued for anything. So, with that being said, that's the round table for the day. Ain't no half step yeah. on Marcus J. We're going to take our final break of the night. And when we come back, we got our rants, we got our closings, and we got a huge announcement on the future of Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J and Legacy Internet Radio with the crew and you and social media. We see you in Charlotte. Y'all represent big tonight. We appreciate it. Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J. Be back in a few minutes. Independence is key to building your legacy. Legacy Internet Radio, the place to be for socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor, comedy, music, and the top sports stories of the week. Legacy Internet Radio, the place to be for Ain't No Has Dab with Marcus J on Mondays and live in radio on Tuesdays. The Green Room Version 2.0 with Jay Grizzy and Lester P on Wednesdays. Iron Horse Radio on Thursdays. Bob Marley and the Family Reggae Mix on Fridays along with Did They Just Play That? The Music Only Show also on Fridays. Replaying Did They Just Play That on Saturdays followed by... Deep House Sessions with your girl DJ Renee Melendez on Saturday nights. Legacy Internet Radio, the place to be. Socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor, music and comedy, and the top sports stories of the week. Independence is key to building your legacy. Legacy Internet Radio.